A couple of hours ago, I posted on Facebook um, on the Home Assistant support group that I was um, a little nervous about making a video for Home Assistant and I had some ideas that I wanted to share and everybody seemed to be interested so I decided to start go ahead and make a video. Anyways, if you don't know what Home Assistant is, it is an open source software that basically allows you to control almost everything around your house. Uh, you can think of it as having someone living with you and doing almost everything that you want them to do for you and the things you can do with home assistance are basically endless it starts with like turning on and off the lights which is like basic things to i don't know pretty advanced things i've seen people do a whole lot of things with it and the good thing about home assistant is it's free first of all second of all it's more advanced than almost every other software out there including the paid ones that you use to automate your homes and also it doesn't limit you as to what a hardware you can use home assistant basically allows you to do pretty much everything you can design your own dashboard in, even on your phone or on your ipad or a tablet on the wall and even for a tv you can basically do pretty much almost everything with it like if someone gets to work or if your spouse gets to work it should let you know or if they leave work for home when you're not home they should let you know so basically it's just think of it as a bunch of different paid apps put together if you know how to use it but i realized that in the community a lot of us are stuck on doing the most advanced things like creating your own millimeter wave sensor which i already have and i will share later on this channel so please subscribe but the thing is i find myself doing most of those things but it, the only issue is i think i enjoy more of the basic and simple home assistant automations that i have an example is let's say every day at 10 a.m i want you to check if there is a mail coming to my house and if there is i want to see a picture of all of those mails and count how many of them and let me know as a message on my phone what this helps is now i know that i'm expecting a mail from the irs because i can see it as part of the images that is coming in so what i need to be on the lookout for it and so i will show you how to do that and also how to see your amazon packages as well when it gets delivered to your house so let's get started once you have home assistant booted up and installed on your machine after going through the registration process this is the um, the screen that you're going to get you can see i have some devices that are already pulled in anyways we need to get the hacks integration which is the home assistant community store that gives opportunity to other developers to submit their work to home assistant um, we need to install that on here so to be able to do that you have to go to this url if you have any version that you are using i'll put this url in the description and on this page you just click on this is my link and then you you go here no, most of the time it will say local host if it's not working right for you just input the ip address of your home assistant integration which is going to be this right here and then you just update it and then you open the link you can see you already have it installed but you can it, on this same page you will see install here and you hit install and then you hit start on boot and then you can go ahead and restart your home assistant after you restart your home assistant you want to go to devices an integ um, integration and then you want to go to add integration here here you want to search for hacks and then you click on it after clicking on it you just acknowledge all of these and then you hit submit once you have this set up you can just click here and then you go to open a new tab now it wants to verify your device basically and you hit that and then you come back here and you can copy this and then paste it and then you confirm we need to have a github account for this and it's free to create that one and then um, you can go ahead and authorize hacks and now you have everything booted, um, everything ready and now you can see you have hacks on this side of home assistant as well you can go ahead and reboot home assistant here if you're not seeing anything just to make sure and now our next step is to install the mails and packages integration which is at the url that i will put in this description and so to be able to install this you can come back to hacks and then search for mail and packages and that is basically the first one and then you click on that you click download and then you just download that 
Now you have, now that you have that, you want to go ahead and restart Home Assistant. You can see it's prompting you here. And then you just restart that. And while we do that, I want you to, um, you know, once you start using this service and you have it helpful, you can go ahead and support the, the person behind it. I think it's a great project. You can support them by um, me starring the project or buying them a coffee. And if you found this video helpful as well, I'll have my buy me a coffee link in the description. Anyways, now that we have Home Assistant booted up, go to settings and then you just go to devices and services and then you click add integration and then you check for the mail and packages. Now this is where you need to make an important decision. Basically what this integration does is just go through your email to search for um, any packages that you are receiving. So the tracking numbers to that and also for any like pictures from those delivery services so that I can grab that and put it into home assistant for you. In this situation, even though this is a great integration, you don't want this um, integration having access to your direct email. So I highly suggest that you just create an email for the purposes of this. Just create that email and we are good to go. I decided to go with the Gmail, which has more advanced things like when you're setting up. So I'll go ahead and go over that with you if you go that route. The documentation for a Gmail user, you need to set up an app password for you to use this integration. The app password is basically another password. So it allows you to use your Gmail with your phone, but also this app password just give access to this app, but also other apps as well, if should it if it should leak. So you need to take that into consideration. So on here, I'll put this link in the description, but you just click on that and that will take you to this page and make sure you're logging into your Google account. And then you need to make sure you have two factor authentication set up or else if you hit this link, you're gonna have an error code. Since I already have all of that set up now, I can just click create and manage app password and then we just verify that it's me and then we are logged in. For the name of the app, I will just go ahead and do home assistant. If I can spell. Then you create it and make sure you copy whatever uh, password that it shows you here and put it in a, um, a great place before hitting OK, because once you hit OK, you will not be able to see it. And we have the password, the app password that we needed, a copy to the right place. We come back to this page and the host is going to be imap.gmail.com. If you are using Gmail, if you are not, the documentation tells you what to do. For the username, it's going to be the email that you, you are using to track um, those so this would be mine. And then the password would just be that app password copied with the spaces in the middle. And then you hit submit and then boom, the first page, you would see this. Now you have the inbox that you want to track. And for me, since I don't have any other inbox, I wanted to track my whole inbox and check for anything. And for the census list, I want it to get almost everything that I'm expecting. So like, this is like the services that they will be like checking for. So I get mail from FedEx and then check for that. And then, um, Amazon as well. Um, I don't live in Canada, so I don't need any of that. And then I check that and DHL the rest. I don't really shop from or anything like that. So I am good with this. And then I leave everything the same and then I hit submit. And for this, you need to make sure like if you use you, you live in the UK, so however you guys visit Amazon, since I'm in the United States, it's .com, Denmark will be DE and it's just like if you live in that country. On this part, it's important that if you are um, forwarding mail from one email to another, you put the email that you are forwarding from. So let's say you created email A, but you are forwarding your Amazon email from email B to A, you need to have email B here. Since I don't have anything like that, I'll just hit submit. And this is where I want this to be um, saved, the images to be saved. Um, so here, I don't have that location. So I have mail. Um, so basically, I'm just going to create that images part. So I, yep, I just hit 
add a um, folder here and I just add images and then we are good to go. Now I hit submit and then it's creating the, the census and everything that we would need. And basically I have everything you can assign it to a location if you want, but things like this, I don't really assign it to anything. Now I have 27 entities to play with here. Now let's take a look here. If you were expecting an, uh, a mail delivery from Amazon, this is where it would be. But basically USPS would be here. And if you got mail delivered, it will be one of these. So I'll, at this point, I'll go ahead and switch to my main instance so that you can actually understand what is going on here. The integration of my main main um, home assistant instance, and you can see the USPS mail camera. You can see that there's mail that I'm getting today that shows here. And you can see it's like a slideshow. And basically every mail that you're getting that day it goes and it updates here. And the same thing will be for the Amazon uh, mail delivery. So if you get a mail in uh, from Amazon and they take a picture and they send it to the Amazon app and through your email, you will see that picture here. So now, since you have all the entities that you need, several of them, you want to be able to play with them a little bit. Um, but the main ones that you will get will be let's say your Amazon package delivered. Hopefully that's the one Amazon package delivered or FedEx package delivered. I don't really care about what's uh, in route. I just want the ones that just got to my house. So now I'll go ahead and show you how I automate these on my home assistant. Before I show you my automations, I want to show you this most one of the most important things you need to do to make your automations work seamlessly. And that is my you need to add this command to your configuration.yaml file, which is your external URL and then your internal URL. Basically, you need to make sure that you have a way of getting a, a secure connection to Home Assistant. And if you want to know a free way of doing that, just leave a comment and I'll show you how to do that. I have two main automations using those integrations. And the first one would be the um, incoming mail. So basically since the USPS, uh, integration updates, like at midnight, I don't want to get a message at midnight that I'm getting mail. I decided to make it, um, the trigger be a time, like a specific time, which is going to be 10 AM. And don't worry, I will have this, um, integration, the YAML, I'll have it all on my GitHub and I'll connect that to the description and you should be able to see all of that. So basically I have it set to 10 AM every day and it, the automation will only trigger if there's, there's mail coming or if I'm receiving mail, cause I don't want to receive a blank, um, notification. So I have 10 AM and then if, um, the mail is above one, which is like if, you, if above zero, which is like one or more mail. And then what this would do is it would take a picture of that camera that the entity provides, which is the this one here. And what you want to do is to make sure you store that camera in your www folder, which so that your, uh, you, you will be able to see it on your mobile app. Um, so your www folder here, and then you, you have to give it a name since you're going to reference that name later in the video. So you, you, you make sure it's there and then you give it that name. You can give it whatever name you want. You just have to make sure you note it down. And now, there are two actions you have to, the first action here is a notification to me, which is a notification to me, my phone here, notified on my phone and then the title and then the image URL has to be your main home assistant URL, which is like your HTTPS URL slash local slash the name you gave up here, um, the image reference. And then the message, basically you can do something like you have, and then you put the sensor, um, I just Jenga, but the sensor that will count how many mail in here. And then you would basically add the rest of the message. So for example, I'll put, um, what it would look like on the screen. And then, uh, that rest is to also notify my spouse as well. Mission number two, normally Amazon delivers mail 
almost all the time well within the day, let's say 3 p.m., 4 p.m. So I didn't really need a time-based trigger. So I just used the Amazon mail delivered or packages delivered uh, trigger that if it goes above zero, which is one or more, then the actions are as follows. I want it to take a picture of that camera, like a snapshot of it. And just like we did with the other one, we have it stored in the WWW um, uh, folder. And then we have the integration, like the name that specifies the, the name that it will give the image here so that we can pull it back down here. Based on all of those entities, you are able to make countless automations. For me, that is how I'm able to pull in my um, Amazon deliveries and my incoming mail um, images through to Home Assistant, making it easy and making it seamless. I want to hear how you're going to use these entities in an automation so that it will give me an idea as well. Anyways, it's been fun catching up with you and it's been fun letting you through this journey. Please share your automation ideas in the description. If you want to support this journey, there will be a link in the description. And also all of these links will also be in the description as well. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in another video.